Number 28. Use the standard entropy data in Appendix G to determine the change in entropy for each of the following reactions. All the processes occur at the standard conditions and at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have our balanced equation here, copper solid plus sulfur gas, which will give us CUS solid. All we have to do is we just have to find that change in entropy. Change in entropy is a delta S value. Change is at delta, entropy is always S. Now, if we are using the back of a textbook, which in this textbook is Appendix G, um, we're using those standard values, it's going to be a delta S notch. Anytime that you see that notch in the upper right hand corner, that means that you're using the appendix values and that it's at standard conditions. So that's exactly what I did. I went to the back of the textbook to find out what those S values are. So for copper solid, it's 33.15, sulfur is 167.82, and then the CUS solid is 66.5. Now we can kind of guesstimate what that delta S value is going to be, whether it's going to be a positive or a negative. Keep in mind that solids are very, very, very structured, so they're very close together. Gases are all over the place, right? And then when these two come together, you're only forming something that is structured. Entropy is always talking about randomness or chaos disorder in your uh, balanced equation. So if you had a lot of randomness in the beginning, right, you had, a, you had a mole of gas, but then you lost that mole and everything is structured, you lost your disorder, you lost your randomness. So if you lose it, that is represented by a negative value. So we can guesstimate that this delta S value is going to be negative. Let's see what the actual number is. Let's use the formula, which is this one. When you have values for independent, you know, individual components, the formula would be the delta S for the whole entire reaction, RxN reaction, is the sum. So the sum, that's just addition. So the sum of all the products minus the sum of all the reactants. Now, are these numbers gonna change? Well, it all goes by the balanced equation. But keep in mind that for this one, all of your coefficients are one, right? In this balanced equation, you got one Cu, one S, and one CuS. These values are for one mole. So in this case, none of the, none of the numbers are going to be different. Right. But just to kind of systematize, you know, if you had a two in front of the S, you would take this in times by two. So I'm just going to, you know, just show you that, you know, systematize just, you know, multiplying by one. But in this case, it's all the same. And then you sum up the ones that you have multiple components. So it's Cu plus S. So I have to add these two values together. I don't have to add anything on the product side because it's just a CUS. So the product side is going to be the same, 66.5. And the reactant side, 33.15 plus 167.82. I get 200.97. Now we're ready to go. Products minus reactants. So my delta S for my whole entire reaction is 66.5, and I'm going to subtract that with the 200.97. And if I look here, it's going to be a negative value. We guessed correctly. Let's just figure out what that negative value is. Delta S for the whole entire reaction is 66.5 minus 200.97. Sig fig rules, I have one as the lowest after the decimal, so I can only have one after the decimal. So it'd be negative 134.5. Units are the same units as the, the units of entropy in the back of the textbook, which is joules per mole times Kelvin. And that is the answer. Makes sense, going from more randomness to less randomness, so negative value, there you go.
Thank you for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. If you would like to, please tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. I think it's pretty cool. It's free educational content to help you in your classes. We got physics and math videos at the moment, so maybe we can help you in those subjects as well. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.